Let's take a nice deep breath and come into, into our bodies, into our hearts together. I'm coming in here today so filled. Cup is filled. Cup overfloweth. And my hope is that your cup will be overflowing by the end. So as you breathe into your upper belly, allow your back, your ribs to open as you breathe in and slowly exhale through your mouth, if you will. Good. Another deep breath into your upper belly, into your diaphragm. Exhale, make a little sound on the exhale. Ha. Ah. Just feel your body breathing in. Exhaling. Ha. Ah. A few more like that as you begin to breathe into your heart. Just imagine the violet consuming flame in the center of your sacred heart space. And as you exhale, fan that flame, if you will. Good, breathing in. Exhaling that sacred fire into your heart, into your chest and upper back. Ah. On the next breath, as you breathe in, Exhale, begin to push the violet flame down the spine and tailbone, legs and feet into the core of the earth with the intention to clear your lower chakras, to clear the lower spaces within you. Good, another breath into your heart, breathing, fanning that violet flame. And just slowly push that violet flame into the belly, the solar plexus chakra, clearing out your will, activating your power, push it down into your sacral, clearing out that abandonment and neglect feeling, opening you for connection, <sighs> sending it into your root, your legs, feet, straight into the core of the earth, making way for a deep sense of safety and well-being trust good just ground that violet flame into the earth and let it dig for you a pathway deep deep roots into the earth and as you breathe in pull in those supportive energies of mother gaia through the feet up the legs through the tailbone pulling in that sense of safety into your legs and tailbone Pulling in the feeling of deep connection to this physical realm, these people around you, the trees and the animals. And as you continue to breathe up, pull in the earth energies into your will chakra, feeling the safety to act. And if you will, just connect to these lower three chakras. Those of us who are spiritual tend to neglect these spaces within ourselves. And I want you to stay there. And we're going to do a spiritual practice through our lower chakras. So if you just concentrate on the violet flame in the belly, upper and lower belly, the legs and the feet. Just feel that part of yourself as I tell you a story. So I believe my purpose on this earth is to anchor the violet consuming flame, a non-religious spiritual frequency for us to reclaim our safety, to purify our fields, to be connected to love, to really claim our power. Now it's a spiritual frequency. It's a light substance. It's the divine light. It's the sacred fire. And my work in the world is to anchor it into our human experience, not to go out of body and go swim with the angels. That's fun too. 
but it's to actually precipitate the light into physical form, into the daily workings of our life. But I'm not perfect at it, and I go in and out of being anchored in it and forgetting about it. So yesterday, after a few days of just pure beauty and nourishment in my hometown, I'm on a plane and I'm sitting there looking at my flight getting delayed and my connection going down to a 10 minute connection in Chicago, right? And I'm like, oh my God, there's no freaking way. (laughs) Like, okay, start planning your overnight in Chicago. Yeah, right? And it's fine. I wasn't in a rush. I didn't have a lot to do. It's summer, another day somewhere else. No big deal. So I wasn't vested or attached. And that's a very important point here. I wasn't like, I need to get home. I was like, it would be really good to sleep in my own bed tonight and see my family. But one more day is no big deal. Non-attachment is an important part of this story. Because I can't tell you... I can do what I did without non-attachment. So as I sat with that, I'm like, okay, I'm surrendering, right? And this is what we've been talking about for the last few weeks. Surrendering, I'm surrendering. I might not get home. I'll let it go. Surrender. And then I remembered what we've been talking about. The soul's divine blueprint, our birthright, manifestation, violet flame. I'm like, Well, I guess I could try to manifest getting home, although it seems like I'd have to pull a miracle out. This week with my coaches, I was talking about using, you know, putting that beautiful dress that you love in the back of your closet and only using it sparingly, you know. Sometimes we get that way with the violet flame. Like, oh, I'll use it for the big things. I don't want to waste it on the little things. If you have a little bit of scarcity mindset, you might find yourself. This was a little thing. Do I want to call upon a miracle for a little thing that I didn't really have a big need for? I mean, you guys, this is how I think. Is this how you think about calling in miracles for yourself? Yeah, right? It's a weird, distorted thing that I'm going through. So I'm like, I'll let it go. I'm going to let this one go. And then there was something within me that was like, why not call in a miracle? Well, it's, I don't need it that much. Well, why not? Why not just call it in? It's okay. So I made the decision. I'm going to, I'm going to call, I'm going to, I'm going to work with law of attraction and the violet flame and my power to manifest. Even though, I mean, who gets a 10 minute connection, right? I mean, the likelihood of anything working out was pretty slim. I had checked all the other flights. There were no other flights. So I send a message out to my team. So even though I have the privilege to do this work in the world, like my colleagues, my coworkers are my spiritual team. So Laura, Rose, Joan, I send it out. And I'm like, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I need some violet flame. I need you to be behind me, folks, right? So I called in my human support team. I called in the people who love me and want to see me achieve the things I want to achieve, who care about me, care about me enough to concentrate on wanting good for me. Did I need that? I don't know. But to have human support, because we're talking about the lower chakras, to have human support, it's, it's a thing. It's important in this life to have a tribe or to have a community or to have people who love you and want to see good for you, right? So the root chakra needs to trust in the divine and that this whole hooky spooky world of the divine light actually exists, even though I have the data, but I can't see it. And so I doubt it. My sacral chakra needed a, you know, an, a, an army of people with me. Are you with me? And then my will chakra needed to decide that I was going to use the spiritual power that is living within me. 
And I needed to be willing to concentrate that spiritual power that lives within my will to focus myself. And I think this is so important, you guys. Something I care about very much is training coaches and healers and something that I see that is lacking in our world or in us as spiritual folk is the ability to concentrate our focus long enough to wait for the divine universe to deliver what we desire. It's like we're ADD. We can't focus on something for more than 17 seconds. Truly, our mind can't focus on something. And we can't focus on a desire or a manifested state often for more than just throwing a little violet flame, set it and forget it. But But it's not always a set it and forget it situation. I had already violet flamed my flight. You guys saw my rental car had beams of violet light coming at me through the odometer. I violet flame every flight I have. This was going to take a concentration, a focus of mental fire without attachment. So I get my team and I start sitting And I call in the violet flame without attachment. And I'm seeing myself like running to the flight, sweat flying off of me. I'm getting on the plane. I'm kind of like really like I'm feeling myself making my flight in my body with all of the emotion, all of the thoughts, all of the faces of the people like, oh, you just made it. Like it was alive in my whole entire infrastructure. I'm like running past people a little rudely, (laughs) right? I did not know how the universe was going to pull this off. So my flight lands at whatever, 810 and 825 is when I'm so, and we're taxiing for what feels like a half hour, like what, like we're we're on like a zigzag of taxiing. We get in there at like 8.20. Flight's supposed to leave at 8.25. I pull it up and I swear to God, I've never seen a message like this come through in my United updates. And I have to read it to you. It says, we're about to save the day for a few customers with a flight connection. Thanks for your patience while they head to the gate for, from another flight. I've never seen this before. I've never gotten an update that my flight was delayed because we're waiting for other people. Holy shit. I sat dumbfounded. I sat there dumbfounded. We always talk about use the violet flame, then gather the data. Etch the data in your left brain so that when your ego wants to debate all the hooky spooky, You have the data set to say, yeah, but I called in a miracle. Now, the miracles don't always happen exactly the way we call them in. It might have happened a different way, but this was just such a clear manifestation. It was undeniable to me. So they delayed the the flight 10 minutes and the gates were right next to each other and I flew right on the plane. And I poured in gratitude for the lesson that the divine universe gave me. It gave me the lesson of where is my concentration? So I may be a diffuse violet flamer, but how am I really calling in the laser beam of focus and saying, hey, now in order to do that, you need to believe you deserve a miracle. You need to believe that the divine is here rooting you on, just waiting to provide something. What is a miracle? We only call it a miracle because we don't understand cause and effect. It feels like it comes out of nowhere. But I called that motherfucker in. It didn't come out of nowhere. I called it in. I believed I was worthy and I wasn't attached. I could have taken it or leaving it, left it. I really could have. That level of non-attachment 
characterizes what we talked about last week. We need to have a surrender as well as a strong vision and desire. We need both. So I was surrendered like, all right, well, I could picture myself in Chicago overnight. Maybe I'll even call someone up. And I held a strong, fiery desire with concentration of the violet flame and energetic activation of that miracle in my body as if it's going to, it's happened, it's happening. And I set that frequency. I plowed that pathway for myself to walk into it. So in these insignificant situations, I learned big things. I sat in that chair and I didn't get my window seat. Someone had already taken it, but I was like, oh, girl, I'll sit wherever you want, God. Thank you. And I honestly cried for about five minutes when I sat in my seat for the lesson in pure gratitude for that lesson, for that reminder, for the grace, for the beauty. And I think that's another place. Right now, I was just talking to someone who you know, was in a tough situation and it worked out, but she wasn't able to see that the situation worked out. So it was like grace given and it was kind of scoffed. And I thought, oh, wait, no, we got to really anchor in. I asked and I received. I asked and I received. Why is that important? Well, first of all, if you've ever been a parent and you gave your kids something and they just walked away and were like, yeah, I deserve that. I could have been better. Could have given me a better lollipop. That sucks, right? Right. So there are divine beings behind all of these things, whether we want to acknowledge them or not, there is a divine presence and order, whatever you believe, whether it's the trees or the sun or an energy field to give gratitude is to fortify whatever we receive. It's to say, thank you. Let's do that again in the future. Let's partner together. And so it's, it is like a marriage. It is like a partnership. Law of attraction and the violet flame is like a loving partnership. It, people can be very transactional about manifestation as if, oh, I violet flame that and I envisioned it and I got that. Thank you. Transaction complete. No, this is about living in flow. It's about living in divine partnership. So you can't turn that on and turn that off. Can't turn that on. My ego was kind of like, okay, when I got on the plane, it sat there for a half hour. It's like, okay, enough of the miracle. Let's go. And then I heard, mm, there might have been other people that will call them that miracle. Like, you can't, it can't just be for you. It can't just be that transaction. You have to live in this state of co-creation. Every moment can be co-creative. Just like every moment in my marriage can be blissful if I were to put that energy and focus into my marriage in that way. Or I can pick him apart in my head and co-create a resentful atmosphere. My choice. Same is true with our relationship with divine order, with resonance with attraction. It's a partnership. So as we go back down into the lower chakras, if we go back into what we were talking about with respect to clearing and being connected to our lower chakras, we can't just be a hot air balloon manifesting without a connection to this physical realm if we want to anchor the light into our lives. We need to be in that co-creative partnership, cultivating a trust in this thing that we can't see, a safety. So when, I mean, I came from an abusive family and I lived on my own at 16. I don't, I didn't have much of a, a root chakra until like the last 10 years. 
but now I feel safe in my relationship to me and I feel safe in my connection and my power to co-create with the divine. That kind of safety is like having your own roots of your tree and then through my partnership and my people, those surface roots that interconnect with my other trees in this physical realm. So we first need to have our own root and our connection to ourselves and feel safe within ourselves and in our bodies so that we can create those surface roots and intertwine our roots into our community, into the people around us. We need both. When I was calling in the miracle, I reached out to those surface roots that are interconnected to my people. I think this is lacking, this sacral connection, this spiritual sacral connection, this co-creative spiritual community that's grounded in the hardship of life. You can go into spiritual communities where everybody's spiritually bypassing. Can you go into a community where you're having a hard time and you have people who you can reach out to who won't suffer with you, but who will hold the vision of what you desire until you hold yourself in that desire? Does that make sense? People who can hold the infrastructure, the scaffolding, or the blueprint of what you're trying to get yourself into but with the objectivity of not being you, they can do that with you. Not such that you're dependent on them, it's just some scaffolding around you. Isn't that beautiful? Now, what most people will do is they want to unplug from mainstream society and go create a special society that doesn't connect with anybody else. A sub-society to do that an ashram, a yoga community. Let's all quit our jobs and go heal each other. But in my vision of this world, that's not how it happens. We don't pull ourselves out of society to go co-create something. We hold ourselves in this physical realm, in this third dimensional wacky corporate whatever life and we start to build surface roots to intertwine with the other spiritual people in our company so that we can raise the frequency of this corporation, of this restaurant we work with. So we can build the infrastructure of the light on the ground. Imagine that. So that's why when I certify coaches and healers, they're like, all right, I'm ready to quit my day job and go live in this alternate reality. I'm like, no, stay where you are. We need awakened nurses. We need awakened teachers. We need awakened bus drivers. We need awakened people on the ground who are willing to live in this really mainstream world who are calling in the miracles and activating the violet flame in that career. So stay where you are. Grow the roots and your trust in source and in Mother Gaia, in the elementals that are here to support you, who are rooting you on. So that we can change the world. We can put all of our cell towers in one state and all huddle around each other, or we can be spread across the country creating a network of the light, calling in the miracles. If you're violet flaming your plane and I'm violet flaming my plane, you're violet flame in Missouri and I'm violet flame in California and she's violet flame in Florida, there is an infrastructure, a network of light that we are co-creating on the ground, practically, daily. I'm sorry to go big picture on it, but I can't help but go big picture. The macrocosm, because the microcosm is your willingness to violet flame your flight. Because guess what? Hundreds of other people get that same hit off of the light because you were the light worker to call it in. Because instead of focusing on the problem, you picked your head up and focused on the vision, on the desire, 
And then you concentrated your focus long enough to anchor the light into the physical realm. Anytime you use the violet flame, you wipe out the interference energy that's not just plaguing you, but it's plaguing everybody around you. That is how the violet flame work works. It actually wipes out the interference in that geographical location, in that system that you're activating. And so when you call in a miracle for yourself, you activate the light in that space or on that planet. One more short story. I did that for seven years in Saratoga Springs. I taught yoga every week and we went into our hearts and we cried together and the group got bigger and bigger and there were hundreds of people that came to this 50 person yoga class. So I go to Saratoga this weekend. I'm like, I'm here. And even though I couldn't physically see anybody or teach a yoga class, my presence in anchoring back down lit up the memory of that light that we shared and activated it. It was so cool. It was so cool. The infrastructure of that connection and those tears and that love and that juice may have been dormant, but it was still there living in the sacred hearts of every single person that touched that experience that we co-created. I didn't move to California and recreate that. So someone who was in Saratoga, Suzanne's like, that's so accurate. It's true. I can't explain that. But I activated a frequency, a geographical matrix in that area. And I went there and it reactivated. And then I left and I felt it, even though I couldn't get back in the room with everybody, they felt it. Because some of them said, just knowing that you're here brought my vibration back up. Not because I'm Jesus but because I had the courage and the self-worth to activate an energy field in the fifth dimensional frequency in that town. And now all I have to do is pop back in and it reactivates or people remember, remember. They re-put together that experience in their frequency, in their body because of the flower of life matrix that we're all connected to. You can do that with people you've loved who've passed away. Tap back into that co-created loving space. It doesn't exist in time or space. You can sit in the suffering of their loss or you can sit in the memory of that love. Either way, it can be reactivated because of the focused concentration of love and violet flame and light and juice that was installed in the infrastructure in that geographical location or in the education system that you were able to touch. I was at a YMCA. I bet you that frequency lives on in that YMCA, in that room. So what's, how do I pull this all together? Do you see the common thread of what we're talking about? Do you have the courage to ignite your vision, your desire, what you want to call in and concentrate that light substance long enough until it comes to fruition and then see the ripple of that through the matrix or that flower of life energy or light grid that connects you to all people or at least to see the ripple through your community because you thought you were worthy enough to call in a miracle for yourself. I did not activate that light grid in Saratoga because I was altruistic and philanthropic. I did it because I had a desire to have a community for myself. I did it because I had the desire to play with yoga. I did it because I had the desire to be put in to make an impact in the world. It was for me. It was a completely selfish reason, selfful reason. So it starts with you feeling worthy enough to be and live in the light. It starts with you feeling worthy enough for the angels and the ascended masters to line up and serve you. So I honor your self-full intentions. I have another example that happened today. A friend had called in help with her Raymore and Flanagan order. They, she had ordered a right facing couch and it came in as a left facing couch. Could have been a shit show. 
We cultivated the violet flame. We imagined her getting the right couch. And what happened was she got this voicemail of them taking responsibility and making everything right. And after I had that experience, I was like, wow, think about the people who were hit by the violet flame and didn't even know it. Like the grace that came into those Raymore and Flanagan employees that were blessed with the divine inspiration to take responsibility and to make it right. Think about how they, by helping her, were blessed by the light. Isn't that so cool? Okay, I had planned to do a violet flame meditation. Please go to the 200 plus meditations on my SoundCloud to do a violet flame meditation and concentrate the sacred light toward your intention, no matter how small, no matter how insignificant, and start getting the data because whew, I am re-inspired and I hope you are too. I love you guys. Many blessings, and so it is done.